This video is brought to you by Osmocote, the planter's plant food. I'm Amy Greesack, a garden writer in obviously Great Falls, Montana, and today I want to talk to you about keeping things going throughout the winter. We just had our first doozy of a blizzard this year, which dumped 17 inches of snow on the ground. We had temperatures of four below. So I was a little concerned about how things were going to fare. Now this that I'm sitting by right now is my heated cold frame. It's an insulated cold frame. It has inch and a half insulation in the walls. It's buried about six, eight inches, and it's heated by a single 100 watt halogen light bulb right here. That heats the whole thing. Now the other day, of course, when the weather was getting cold, I plugged it in and everything was fine because I've had it running up to until 20 below, and it's been just fine, carried all the plants through without a problem. But with all the heavy snow, it unplugged it. It actually pulled the plug apart. And so we were dark and there was so much snow and cold that I didn't even bother coming out to check it. I just figured if it lives, it lives. If not, oh well. So finally today, the snow is melting off enough that I can finally check and see what we have. And the cool thing, oh, if I can get this up, is everything is living. I have Swiss chard in here. I have spinach that just germinated. I have my precious rosemary. And everything is still living, still looking green. Actually not even nipped by the cold, even though this was four below without any additional heat. It did have snow on top, which I think is very important. And I think what really got it through this time of year, because this is November, we're in November, is the soil temperature. I think it's still warm enough that that was able to keep it going. But it just really shows you what a cold frame at all can do, even if it's not heated. So cold frames are really good to have if you want to get the vegetables through. I'm just tickled to death and I'm going to enjoy chard tonight and then also make sure my light bulb is working. So for our next storm, I'm ready to go. Now we also want to check to see how things fared underneath the flooding row cover. This is the heavyweight fabric that I put on in the fall when I planted the spinach and radishes, and then also a lot of my cilantro reseeded. So I wanted to protect that too. So it typically adds four to six degrees protection on a plant. But the nice thing is, is I think at this time of year with the heat from the earth, I think that's really a big benefit. So I just covered it, did nothing fancy, whoops, except weigh it down. And so actually radishes look like they took a hit. I'll pull these up because they'll be perfectly edible tonight, but I don't think they're going to grow. They're not going to do anything else this year. Spinach looks fine. It's small, you know, it's coming along, but it's still green and just looks dandy. But the exciting thing is, is the cilantro. All the little cilantro did just fine. It isn't hurt one bit. So I am super excited because where, who would ever think that you could be picking fresh cilantro, middle of November after a blizzard in Montana. So this is very, very cool. Gonna be picking more for dinner tonight, taking advantage of it as I can. So my recommendation, obviously after all this, is it doesn't take a whole lot to protect in the fall and going into the winter, but boy, the benefits are great. So grab those floating row covers, throw those over some of your favorites. If you got lettuces, spinach, chard, all that, you have floating, or if you have a gar cold frame, that's great. They work great. If you can build yourself a heated cold frame, that's fantastic too. Or like me, talk your husband into it. That's always wonderful. It's a lot easier that way. But they really, really work. And it's just fabulous to be able to come out when there is snow on the ground and still be picking from your garden. 